Problem seven of the practice problems in the Praxis 5165 study companion. I guess that's what this is. Done with the teaching stuff, back to actual math. We're told that y equals five times the sine of x minus six and asked to figure out what is the maximum value of y. In other words, how big can this expression here get? The key to answering that question is understanding sine of x. Really, the punchline is knowing that sine of x oscillates between negative one and positive one. In case it's been a while since you've seen any trig stuff, the idea is that the sine of x is the y coordinate on the unit circle, where x is the angle representing the terminal point. Sounds a lot harder than it is. All I'm saying is if this is your angle right here, that gives you this point right here. The y coordinate here is just the sine of this. The x coordinate is the cosine, but we're not talking about cosine here. Important things to know about both sine and cosine is they each oscillate between negative one and positive one because this is the unit circle, meaning it's centered at the point zero, zero and has a radius of one. So if the radius is of one, this point right here is at zero, one, and this point down here is at zero, negative one, and this point over here is at one, zero, and this point over here is at negative one, zero. All the other points that aren't labeled here have x and y coordinates that are some numbers between negative one and positive one. The height of the point never gets higher than it is right here or lower than it is right here. The x coordinate, the left and right of the point, never gets further to the right than it gets here or further to the left than it gets there. Anyways, if you're comfortable with all that, answering this question is fairly easy. You wanna make this expression as big as possible? Well, what should you choose for a sign? You can choose any number you want between negative one and positive one. Well, that number is gonna get multiplied by five and then I'm gonna subtract six from that product. So if I wanna be left with something as large as possible, I should make sign as large as possible because it's gonna get multiplied by a positive five. The largest sign can ever be is positive one. So the maximum y will ever be, will be five times that positive one minus six. In other words, five minus six. In other words, negative one. I think this algebraic approach is the easiest way to answer this question, but it hinges upon you remembering this key fact about sine, which again is also true for cosine, but is not true for tangent, cotangent, cosecant, or secant, any of the other four trig functions. Okay, but what if I don't remember that? How can I answer the question otherwise? Well, fortunately, you got a calculator right here, and your calculator has graphing capabilities, so you can just graph this as a function. I could make y equal to five times the sine of x, close my parentheses, and then we wanna subtract six. Be careful, make sure you use the subtraction key, not the negative key. These are your operations over here. Subtraction's right next to addition, multiplication, and division. We don't want five sine of x times negative six, for example, so we don't use this key, we instead use this key. Anyways, whatever we type in here, as long as the equal sign is highlighted, will show up when we press graph. We press graph, and we see this transform sine wave. You probably just look at this and tell that the highest it ever gets, which happens over and over again, appears to be about negative one. Oh, right, this answer right here. It's definitely not positive one, positive five, or negative six. That's probably more than enough on this problem. However, I wanna do just a tiny bit more. I don't think they ever would, but suppose two answers were negative one and negative, I don't know, 0 0.9 and negative 1.1, .1, and you couldn't quite tell what these maximum values were equal to here. What could you do? Well, your calculator has this nice built-in feature that'll find maxima and minima for you. It's under the calculate menu. So since calculate is in blue above the trace key, we hit this blue key second and then trace to get into the calculate menu. We've already used this menu to find the intersection of two lines in a previous problem. In this case, we wanna find a maximum value, so we hit four. The challenge with maximum values is often there's many of them, like we see in this case. So to find a specific maximum, what's called a local maximum or a relative maximum, we have to give our calculator a left bound and a right bound. So you can do that by moving your cursor. As I press to the right, you see that kind of X looking cursor float from left to right. Anyways, a left bound, any point to the left of this little hilltop here could be this point. I hit enter, now it asks me for a right bound. I move my cursor a little bit to the right of the hilltop. I hit enter, then it asks me to guess. That's because it uses this different algorithm and it needs a starting point for the algorithm. So I move the cursor somewhere towards the top of the hill here, hit enter, it does a little bit of calculation, and it tells me the X and Y coordinates corresponding with this maximum. I wanna know the maximum value of Y. Maximum value of Y is negative one. That is answer B here. If I wanted to know the maximum value of X, I don't, but if I did, I could get this decimal approximation from my calculator. You might think that's kind of weird. That's actually pi over two there. Oh, right, an angle of pi over two radians. 
takes me from standard position over to this vertical line, which corresponds with this terminal point, which has a y coordinate of one, which is the maximum that the sine graph can ever be, and corresponds with a maximum value of this expression of negative one, five times one minus six.